Oh, wait, you're gonna want me to take my earrings out. Don't murder me. Yep. So can I start? Yeah, I guess it's probably assumed, but we both know that you're like leading this one, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm topping. Okay. So welcome back everybody. This week we're doing Sorry, we need to do this fast. Oh, I'll stop it. Welcome back to another week. Hi guys. This is entry twenty-five. Five is times it? five is twenty-five. That's good. It feels but, like I feel like we've done more than that. Or like <laughs> that you would think that we've done more than that for how long we've been doing that. Yeah, but I mean there's only fifty weeks in the year, so do you think about the fact that that means that like we spent over well we've honestly probably spent more than like 50 hours consecutively like just in recording time not double probably with how many mishaps we've had oh wait maybe yeah but now this is actually like the last two have been going greatly greatly Great. Well, I think it's just like going great. Yeah. Anyway, this week we're doing the David Parker Ray, aka the Toy Box Killer, and this was sent in a request by um a friend. You don't want to name drop. I don't know. I played the beginning. Luke. Yeah, I be- I played the beginning like literally thirty seconds of the po- one of the podcasts that I listened to my friends and I was like listen to how awful this is <laughs> and they and then they I, like this asked me something about like how we had like found it or whatever I was like well actually our friend recommended it and, he, and they were like your friend recommended this and they were disturbed this is no doubt the worst story we've done and like I'm, by far so. and I've kept I've tried to keep it as PG or not PG, like PG thirteen as possible, because I've kept out a lot of the mm. details of like the torture methods. And at one point, I read this thing that he would, this audio recording that he would play, very disturbing. And I cut a ton of it out. Um, but y'all can go look that up on your own if you just look up Toy Box Killer audio recording. It'll come up, and it's about eight pages long. The transcript. Eight pages long. And this is him. But you know what is so funny? Hmm. Well, yeah, it's funny. Um, It's funny that Luke recommended this case because you know how he says naked? He says, like, naked. Naked. Yeah, he says, like, naked. And then also, like, Pella. I guess. Well, what's funny is in the recording, this guy says naked like that. Mm hmm. How much do you want about Luke actually knows like a lot about him? Huh? I was saying how much do you want about Luke actually knows like a lot about this dude? <laughs> and he's just like, oh, I've never heard of this I just before, thought of but... this. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. End of the story. Trigger warning. Rape, torture, murder, anything really you can think of, definitely in this. Bestiality. Um, oh my god, bestiality. Also, fair warning, I'm not as like... In the on this one, I do know a little bit about it, and like I did a little bit of research, but Marcus is definitely going to be leading this one because, guys, this week has been a living, I was going to say a living hell, but really, it's not been a bad week. It's just been a really freaking busy week, and I have two exams. Anyways, being super good. Or at least you're not being tortured for months. All right, now. Well, this is true. I don't, I can't make any sort of comeback to that. <laughs> I could, I almost did, and I was like, mm, that's the idea. Uh, yeah. David Parker Ray, aka Toy Box Killer, was an mm-hmm. American serial killer, kidnapper, torturer, and serial R word. Yeah. You can, I mean, okay. I think you already said, like, trigger warning, right? Oh, right? I think I did say that, yeah. So also, he's claimed wait, to. Wait, okay. I will say, I'm sorry, but. You don't need to be, well, I, okay. 
I agree that we shouldn't be like overly vulgar in detail. No, but I feel I like no, I don't I don't know, just like some of like especially like I'll tell you off camera. Okay. Just like some of the stuff is just like disgusting. It's like awful. Like, like what? No, I'm curious. It's not even like that bad. It's just like how he says it. Like in the recording, I was reading the transcript and it's like. All right. Yeah, I'm probably best to don't put all that. In. Yeah. Okay. So back to David. He, um, oh, David. Um, all right. <laughs> um, he's claimed to have abduct, abducted and tortured around 40 to 60 women. The exact number is not known, but they were mostly either sex workers or drifters in, from the community. So he was born on November 6, 1939 in Bellin, New Mexico to his parents, Sweet. Nettie and Cecil Ray. Cecil? Cecil? Which one's like that's the dad. woman? Okay, that's what I imagined. But um, Also, as for the how many he... Okay, you said he claimed to have abducted and tortured 40, 60 women. Because, yeah, they didn't find, like, bodies for most of them, right? Yeah, they didn't find any bodies. Oh, I thought they did find, like, a couple or something. Mm-mm. Because oh. he was, like, crazily, like, meticulous about everything okay. to not get caught. But I looked up a picture of this dude. He's, like, kind of terrifying looking. Yeah. He kind of looks like my grandfather. But he's, like, terrifying and, like, okay, this sounds bad. But, like, I was going to say you're, like, average white guy way. But, like, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. My AirPods, like, my stuff. But in the way of, like, he looks... Just very, like, non-threatening, I guess. And that's, like, what's scary about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, anyway. So, Cecil and Nettie Bray, they lived on the farm with Nettie, the mom's parents, and the sister of Nettie. And so, so they're all living on a farm together. So, uh, David's aunt? Yes. Okay. So... The father, Cecil, would regularly, like, abuse David and his mom. And the the mom finally, like, had enough of it. And then she was like, I'm leaving. And so she left. But she left David with his dad. But then, um, a little bit later, his dad left as well. And then, so she was just stuck with his grandparents and his aunt. On but before his dad would... Um... Before his dad left, wasn't his dad, like, didn't he show him, like, when he was, like, a really young kid, like, they would bond by, like, him showing David, like, really, like, awful, like, uh, Adult I don't even know. Pictures. Videos? <laughs> like, not, but, like, I don't yeah. even know, like, what the proper name for, I got just, like, basically videos of, like really awful like NSFW I don't know if that I think that'd be more like or is decent, that? but it was like not like NSFW I think just means like sex in general right okay I'm about to sound so ignorant I really don't know okay we'll just move on anyway okay. so once he was staying once, once his mom and dad were gone he was stuck with his grandparents and by this time his grandfather would regularly like abuse him as well but um, his aunt would regularly force herself like upon David, and so that's horrible. So that kind of probably brings like a little into like why he's like messed up. We're not messed like like that didn't help him, you know. Well, yeah. It actually this is just over what my psychopath test, psychopathology test was that I took today. But how like there's like a it's called like the diet diathesis stress model or whatever um yeah basically where like a lot of like behavioral um I guess actions and like traits are like a common I guess this isn't really like a like hot new take but 
if they're a combination <laughs> of like your genetic like makeup, like just like who you are as a person and as well as like your environment, but also that you can have like genetic like predispositions for stuff that wouldn't necessarily ever like arise or like come to a head if you were in like a more stable environment site. So yeah. like in this case it's probably a combination of like again, I'm not a psychologist, I don't know. But it's probably like a combination of like him having like genetic like genetically like bad situations from his dad and like his parents just like don't really seem like the best of people. And then maybe his aunt. Maybe. Yeah, his like whole family tree to be honest. Um but that with a combination of like he was exposed to that, so it kinda like triggered that very well could have triggered that inside of him. Correct. So I'll just I'll just do a quick little overview of like the toy box that he's like known for that he's infamous for. Um it was okay, like maybe we don't say infamous. I thought that's the word. I mean it is, but it kinda of glorifies it a little bit. Oh, well, his horrific toy box. Okay. Okay, so it was in a trailer on a piece of property that he had in New Mexico, and it was soundproofed, and it was worth over $100,000. I was wondering, I'm reading your notes right now, how... So, okay, so the toy box is, like, the trailer itself... Yeah, so he has that, him in... I was kind of unclear on that at first. There's, like, a piece of land that the toy box is on, and then mm -hmm. he'll... He'll... Yeah. He has, like, a motor home that he would, like, abduct people in, and then they he, they would drive Wait, to the toy box. So, um, anyway, yeah, he would drive to the toy box, and then they would do unholy things. Um, he had like a ton of other accomplices as well throughout his time, which is very, really like, like one thing that, um, it's like unclear because no one like cooperates except like he does have a, like a girlfriend. It's like he's kind of his partner, but it doesn't last long before he's caught. But, um, another time he is, um, like has a group of friends over or something and he brought one of the girl women out that he had like had in the like had at the moment and then mm -hmm. he like brought her out in the middle of this like party well it's not really a party it was like a group of like five people and then he somehow got like trigger warning this like breeding spray oh. for like dogs oh my god that's supposed to make them like horny. and then he sprayed it all over the woman and then he made his dog like. Oh my god! I didn't, I didn't so, know about that. That's that was that when I read that on like three different websites and in one of the podcasts I was listening to, and I was like, "That's absolutely." I don't even know the word. I was gonna say like this. I do forget. Like this happened in 1939, so it's not exactly like the most well no he gets caught in 19 he gets caught in 1999 okay what was i talking about no i was saying that um oh it is like 1940s or like 1930s technically so not exactly the most feminist of time well that's when he was born okay but okay you're right so this is probably what do we know he was caught in 1999 yeah but weren't his like like his whole journey wasn't it literally like his whole life that he was basically like that they think he was doing this for yeah they think he like killed his first person when he was like a teenager i think he was like 15 16 or something right or maybe 14 even um I don't know. anyways point being it's even then it would be like maybe like 50s 60s that's i don't know um Clearly, I don't. I wouldn't say it was like normalized for like a random like enslaved woman to appear at a dinner party, but 
depending on I guess. Well, she wasn't murdered. No, I know, but you said that he like brought out like this girl like in, at a like dinner party or something, right? Yeah, but she wasn't murdered. She was alive. No, I know. I'm just saying. I said enslaved. Oh. I didn't say. Oh, I thought you said a murdered girl. No, no, just like oh. a girl that's clearly not there consensually. But I, I was saying like I guess. Granted, while that probably still wouldn't fly there in like most crowds, I'd imagine that the people that he hung around were probably not super cool, normal folk. Well, that's probably true. You. Hey, can I? Much love and all, but can you stop hitting the mic? It's like. I haven't hit it. It's because it's something's like loose. It like rattles every time you move it. Yes, like I can hear that. Okay, I just won't move it. Okay. That's a crazy concept. Okay, so inside the toy box, back to this, where when the police finally, like, came and, like, took everything, um, there was tons of, like, surgical tools, electrif- electrification devices to, like, shock people. Wasn't restraints, it, Restraints, like, chains. Wasn't there one, or, like, when he uses also, again... We can't say trigger warning for like the whole thing. It's just a big fact trigger warning. But wouldn't there be wouldn't there be like something that he would like he'd like electric or he'd have like uh, velvet? What's my word? Vulgar, I guess. But he'd have like nipple clamps, right? <laughs> and he would like electrocute them through. Yeah, I'll talk about that later. Okay. Hey. In my notes. Okay, well... Guys, my notes look so professional this week, guys. They look good. They're just... I, I can't tell. I couldn't tell, like, where you were going with this since we're giving the overview first. Oh. It's like when professors anyway. give, like, outlines of their whole lecture before they lecture. Okay, so in the toy parks, he would also have... He had, in the middle of it, like, the... I almost said main attraction. Not the main, like... Now you've got... I point. Victorious in my head. Oh. Was a gynecologist chair. Or what is those chairs? You know, like the chair with the stirrups. Yeah, I don't know that I have a better name for it than the chair with the stirrups. And then he had different gynecological... Wait, that's a big word. Gynecological. Gynecological equipment. equipment. That's so horrifying. And then various, like, like... Various audio and recording devices. So, what kind of recording to- devices existed in nineteen forties? Well, I think it, that was more like Later. well, that was like when he was caught. That's what the police like wrote down what was in there. Oh, I see, I see. But, but despite this being like, I don't even know what kind of how to describe him. He was. Sp- Supposedly, like a normal person a, and like a kind person in the morbid podcast I listened to, they were talking about how when he got arrested, his boss at the time actually gave him paid leave because he like didn't believe that he was like, oh well, he'll be out because that's definitely not true. So apparently, he seemed like completely normal, and he worked as a maintenance man at the New Mexico Parks Department, which is like a park ranger. So he was man. in a uniform. If anything, was he? Well, okay, yeah, but like, not any shade. But it looks like a to anyone. But police uniform. Oh, I was about to say, does it, is he more just like a cleanup dude? No. Oh, we well, said maintenance man. By the way, Mike is still rattling. So David is believed to have started raping and abducting women around the 1950s. He did like. This is all somewhat allegedly, or I guess, like, claimed by him. As if y'all saw my face, documented. like, smiling just now, it wasn't because of what Aubrey was saying. It was because I just tried to say what she just said, and then she asked to stop and let her say that bit of information instead of me I saying I have it. nothing to say. I, that's what I was I saying. know. I was, just, I was just trying to explain that if I, I was smiling because I was, like, laughing because you, not the story. Yeah. Anyway. It's a bit of a treacherous road you walk upon when you smile with cases like this. Um, anyways, he allegedly, but 
probably true, would drug the women with uh, cocktail drugs that cause amnesia. So basically think like date rape drugs, I guess, I'd imagine. Um, no. No, not date rape drugs that cause amnesia? I feel like that would be something nope. to that effect. Well, then what is it? Because you didn't oh, well, specify. It's like, well, it's over here, actually, later on. I talk about how what exactly it is. See, that's what I'm saying. In the audio okay. speech. Okay. It's sodium pethanol and phenobarbital. Phenobarbital is a date rape drug. You do realize date rape drugs aren't officially called oh. date rape drugs, right? Okay, well, I don't know. I'm well, sorry. I do because I'm a woman. First. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take the reins and we're going to talk about <laughs> we're going to talk about Cindy Hindi, what which was name? his his lady friend. And she was born February 6, 1990 February 6, 1969. And she was 30 years younger than David See, that is wild. And she was raised in Seattle, Washington. And when she was growing up, her family life was not good as well. She was sexually abused by her stepdad. And her mom like didn't believe her when she like said that he was abusing her. And then um, when she was 12, she got kicked out of her house by her mom because her mom like, chose the stepdad over her. What, and like, so she started mom, living on the streets. What do you imagine? Like, I don't I don't, like, I don't know, what kind of life, or how do you even, like, think that your daughter is going to survive at the ripe age of 12 on the streets? You know, I, or I guess, like, if you're... I'm sure she had something wrong with her. I guess if you're, like, willing to do that in the first place, you're probably not really thinking of, like, the consequences of your actions, generally. Perhaps. That's just wild. But. True. Okay, so, at 16, as you were saying... Hold on. Okay. So she started living on the streets at 12. And then when she was 16 years old, she got pregnant and had her first son as she was still living on the streets at this time. And then mid 20s, she had by the, her, by her mid 20s, she had two more children. So three in total. And do we, we don't know who like the fathers were of any of these? No. Okay. And. So when her first son was 10, so I guess when she was 26, she sent the kids to live with her mother. Don't know how that, like, okay. Um, but sent them to live with her mother and then left. Left? Left? What do you mean left? Just, like, left them with her mother and she left. And this is when she meets David. She left all Okay. She left all of her kids with her mother. Yeah, that's just like, I don't know. And it's the mother that threw her out of the house because... Yeah, that's why I'm like confused. No, yeah, it's there's no sense. Maybe it's like since the son is like 10 years old now, she's like, here, you get like a do-over to maybe like be cool to your preteen child. Maybe. Okay. okay, so we're going to fast forward to... 1997 this is when cindy and david meet in a bar and so and they like get along and they're all like happy i guess together and then january of 1999 is when they finally called it official and moved in together and was this by the... this time I'm he sorry, told him to. does he get does he do you know if he like has like another main love interest if you will. No, but I know he has a daughter with someone else. Yeah, well, okay, so I think that if I'm correct in my assumptions... Well, he had three wives before this one. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. But, but Cindy think, wasn't like, even his wife. I think he, she was. They had a shotgun wedding. Like, it was just Hold super, on. like, like, not, I guess. Like, it was, like, really fast and just, you know, not made a big deal. And if I remember correctly, in the podcast I had listened to, I mentioned that, like, she, like, the reason that you'll talk about in a little bit, but, like, she... Yeah, no, they were just girl girlfriend and boyfriend. Okay. But he was divorced four times. You cut out? But none of... He was divorced four times. 
Okay. So, but by 1999, he had told Cindy all about his, like, fantasies and love for stuff. And he had been, she tells police later on that he told her, like, right from the beginning that he had already been, like, abducting girls and doing all this for, like, 30, 40 years oh, since. really? Because from before what I had listened to had said that, like, it was unclear whether or not she actually knew, like, like, he would... Tell her about, like, the fact that he, he, like, liked the sadistic stuff and, like, it was, like, a thing that they were, like, in the BDSM or whatever, but, um, but I, it, No, she was, like, an, that's just wrong. Okay, because the, it, the podcast had said that, that she wasn't aware, or it was unclear if she was aware or not of the, like, oh. his actual, um, crimes. No, she did. Or, like, if she was anyway. complicit. Oh. So, I guess they move in 1999, so then they want to get, like, a new girl. And so in March of 1999, three months later, um, they find 22-year-old Cynthia Vigil. Vigil. Yeah, and so she was a sex worker as well, and she did occasionally some heroin, and that's important later. Um, so not that big a deal right now. I think you also forgot to mention, or maybe you did, and I just didn't hear you, but that um, with David and Cindy, that David would like even try a lot of his like torture methods on her before, like consensually, supposedly. Um, before like yeah actually I, I said, wait i did say that i thought i don't think you, i don't know if you did you said it in the notes but i don't know if you said it out loud i thought oh i don't think i did say it out loud yeah he would do it but he didn't like get the same like gratification it was kind of like she was like the guinea pig so like when he actually they actually like abducted a girl then he he would like use however she reacted to like his torture methods or like new plans or whatever like, use that as a guide of what to tweak. And I imagine, I was telling, Marcus and I were talking about this yesterday, actually, that, like, I imagine it being somewhere along the lines of, like, whatever her, whatever she found, like, I, like, liked, I guess, in her, um, liking for BDSM. I'm sorry, I can't, I don't know how to, like... Very nice. I can't do Very it with cool. like the word, like the look you're giving me right now. I'm looking at you like that every time. Anyways, I feel like he would gauge that and be like, "All right, so ten times worse than that," and like that's what he would do. That is just my own speculation. And so David and Cindy posed as like potential clients for Cynthia. And Cynthia, not knowing any different, she was like, sure. And so she goes inside their motorhome, because remember, there's a motorhome, and then the toy box is on the property. Or what? Mm -hmm. And so she gets inside their motorhome, and they immediately, like, overpower her and, like, handcuffed her to this pipe inside of the motorhome. And then Cindy was supposedly got out a cow prod and that thing that's like electric isn't it electric yeah it's it's like a electrocution it's like an electrocution i mean like basically a big stick. electric like electric like prod like it's like tss. yeah it's like a big stick that like I, I think it's literally for cow like they would like electrocute them yeah you like that. move them yeah but but so yeah but yeah, so she was like, if you, if y'all try to, she was, hold on, I'm moving. Um, if she tried to, like, escape or anything, that they would use that on her. And then she said that at one point she, like, got it, like, the pipe she was attached to was, like, loose. And Wait, this she, is, like, uh, Cynthia is saying this? Yeah, yeah. She's alive. Uh-huh. Wait, you just didn't mention that. She later talks about how she could notice that the pipe was like unscrewing from the floorboard. And so just she took her time and like slowly like 
undid the like screws and then she she got loose a little bit and but at that same time they she made a noise and Cynthia or I mean sorry not Cynthia Cindy heard her and got up and came and used the cow prod on her and then they like forced her to like get naked and like stuff and then she just sat in the back of the motorhome for 150 miles until they got to elephant Bootin. <laughs> no way. Elephant Butte. Butte. Butte? Like. Butte? Preston Butte? Colorado Butte. I have dyslexia. This is, I feel like that's not even a dyslexia. I mean, okay. I won't. Um, New Mexico. Oh. Aubrey's the doctor. I, I won't invalidate your experience. But anyways, it's Elephant Butte. New Mexico. Yeah, so once they got there, it's when she was placed into the toy box. Maybe so not. this is where I'm going to read the transcript. Can I read the transcript? Because I feel like you're going to be like really weird no. about it. No, because I need you to react to it. What? You'll give better, because like I've read it like a lot already, so I'd, I already know what it's going gonna to say, but like I feel like you'll be like... <gasps> all right, but you know, you are, if, there's like, if you know me at all, you really shouldn't say, like, this is... I'm waiting for your reaction. I can't even open birthday gifts normally. I don't know how to react in that case. Okay, so this is what would happen. Once he got, once she got into the toy box, David would play this recording for her. And this is what he did with apparently all of the victims. And so as soon as he like gets them inside, he immediately hits play on this. So I did read the first like two. This is how it starts out. I was already like disgusted. Yeah. Hello there. And he said the B word. That's also stands for female dog. But I'm just gonna I changed all of them to female dog, but I'm just gonna say female. Or should I say girl? Yeah, don't say girl. Don't mean if you're quoting, I feel as though it'd be most credible to just say it, but you know, that's just me. Well, I don't wanna say it. Okay. You don't have to. You could just I won't give in to peer pressure. I feel like what I just did was like the opposite of peer pressure. Hello there, B word. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrist and ankles chained, gagged, probably blindfolded. You're disoriented, disoriented and scared too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal under these circumstances. For a little while at least, you'll need to get your stuff together and listen to this tape. Stuff it's very relevant to your situation. Word. Oh, yeah, it's S-H-I-T. <clears throat> it's very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you in detail why you've been kidnapped, what's going to happen to you, and how long you're going to be here. I don't know the details of your capture because this tape is being created July 23rd, 1993. Keep in mind, Cynthia, 1999. So he's been using this tape for six years. That's like got to be so horrific to hear. Like if it would already be horrible, but then you hear that date, like if it's that long, like yeah, just just knowing that like this isn't someone that like it's not like you're like his first person or something, and that like he might, I don't know, it makes it I feel like a lot realer. Or at least I feel like it would. Bring. Or I feel like it would make you feel just like way more like oh like, like screwed. There's no getting like out of this. Yeah. Okay, back in as a general advisory tape. Oh wait. Because this tape is being created July 23rd, 1993, as a general advisory tape for future female captives. I skipped some, and so and then it says, because he just kind of says, like, the randomest stuff in this, too. Like, just unnecessary. But I think he's just trying to, like, fear monger. You burp a lot. Okay. You've been taken by force, and you're going to be kept and used by force. What all this amounts to is that you're going to be kept naked and chained up like an animal to be used and abused any time we want to, any way that we want to. And you might as well start getting used to it because you're going to be kept here and used until such time as we get tired of having you here. And we will eventually in a month or two, maybe three. And then I skipped a little more. If I killed every woman that we kidnapped there'd be bodies strung up all over the country and besides i don't feel like killing a girl unless it's absolutely necessary so i've devised a safe alternative method to, of disposal i have plenty i have had plenty of women to practice on over the years so i've gotten pretty good at it i've gotten 
Sorry, got it Sorry, down. I pretty well got it down. Pat. Wait. Yeah, he's really country. Sorry. So I've got it really pretty well. Anyway. That's why I wanted to read it. Um, so also, then that's also like scary because he's saying if he's recording this in 1993 and he's saying that he's had time to practice it before this recording. Yeah, he's basically th- th- That's like, even like a longer credifying thing. Is credify a word? It is, right? I don't know. Credifying himself as like a expert in being a yeah. trash and being. Back to it. And I enjoy doing it. I get off on mind games. And after we get completely through with you, you're going to be drugged up real heavy with a combination of sodium pentol, pentol which, is a ra- which is just a general anesthetic, which is also known as like the truth serum. So it's like, I don't know, but he would use that and Phenobarbital, anti-seizure medicine. But they're both, pretty sure they're both just like basically dare drugs. If they're the type of thing that will make you like loopy, like the general anesthetic, even like, like the true serum. It's basically like if you're you're like all loopy on like you know like dentist drugs or whatever, you know, like it's that kind of thing. Yeah, it's just gonna make you like not coherent. Okay. And then he says, they're both hypnotic drugs that will make you extremely susceptible to hypnosis, auto hypnosis, and hypnotic hypnotic suggestion you're going to be kept drugged a couple of days while i play with your mind by the time i get through brainwashing you you're not going to remember anything about this little adventure you won't remember this place us or what's happened to you so that's terrifying that's not even that's not the whole letter at all even close i didn't didn't know that that transcript like didn't kill all of them I guess I kind of assume that he did. Wait, so his thing of 40 to 60 women is only the women that he supposedly killed? Oh, no. No, it says no, no, abducted, no, no. abducted and tortured 40 to 60 women. Because, I mean, he I th- he would get like five to six girls a year, so. Because he'd keep them for like months. Yeah, I was just thinking that too. It's so horrifying thinking of like how long he had each of them. Yeah. So, like he talks about the seizure medications and stuff, he would apparently like drug them and like keep them up drugged up for like many days, and then he'd somehow get them to forget that like everything that happened. He'd drop them off in the middle of nowhere, and they would just be like, not knowing what happened. I mean, anyway, the thing is, the scary so that thing was, is like that they're still probably like, well, definitely, actually, like mentally, like forever, I guess affected by that and it like it's not like it doesn't like like the trauma is still there and i'm sure they still felt that just like even more like confusion as to why yeah i feel like that's almost scary okay but back to cynthia virgil so that's the girl that was in that just got abducted for talk vigil that we were talking about um so after he made her watch the video he she was like beaten and stuff, and then this is what like they used some kind of like electrification to like shock her until she would like pass out, and then they'd wait for her to wake up, and then they'd like shock her again, and like until she would pass out, and she would be like um, chained up and stuff, and like a thing that he used on every single victim apparently was this like big chain around their neck and it would be padlocked on so there's like no way for them to get out. It's like a padlocked collar and, or something like that. That was attached to the floor? And it would also be attached to the floor so they couldn't like go like... It's they just could so barbaric. Like, could only this much. Yeah. Okay, so this is when the story kind of goes up. So, all right, I'll just talk about the next part, but... So March 22nd of what year is this? Um, 1999 still? Yeah. Okay. So David had left work as his park ranger maintenance self in a uniform. Um, I imagine important to the story later. Again, I'm reading off Marcus's notes. He thought Cynthia was too weak and starving to try and escape because apparently they were starving her as well. Um... And so he took the chains off of her, well, around her, off of her 
legs and arms. But the padlocked collar thing was still on. Oh my god, she had chains on her arms, legs, and cult, like neck. Yeah. What is even like it's so excessive? All right. Um. So left uh, Cindy all day while David was at work. Um. At some point in the afternoon, or wait, she left. He left Cynthia with Cindy. Sorry, the combo of names is confusing. Um, yeah, they're all kind of similar. But anyways, yeah, he left Cynthia, the victim, with Cindy, his girl, the girlfriend. Uh, so at some point in the afternoon, Cindy, girlfriend, got a phone call and went to answer the phone. So she left the keys to Cynthia's collar on a table, I guess, kind of near where Cynthia is. is Thing. And Cynthia started moving the table to try to get the keys, but as she was doing so, Cindy had walked back into the room, and so they started the fight, and Cynthia grabbed an ice pick eventually, Cynthia being the victim again, um, that was laying on the floor. Also, why is there just a random ice pick laying on the floor? I feel as I though... think that's just, like, show to show you, like, oh, there's just, like... Like, it's just, like, a, the almost, stuff like, that threatening. Just, like, laying around. Yeah. It's just so horrific. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, yeah, grabbed an ice pick that was laying on the floor and slashed Cindy in the back of her head around her ear, or like above her ear, and she took the keys and unlocked herself, girl boss, and she ran outside and saw a nearby motor home and ran to it, and I forget, like, they're kind of in the middle of, like, nowhere, I imagine, like, if it's just, like, a big open lot with, yeah. like, a motor home and then, like, their little toy box thing. So, anyways, once she gets to a somewhat nearby, I guess, motor home, she runs to it, open, or, and, like, is, like, banging on the door, I imagine, begging for the people inside to let her in or to help her, and she was naked and covered in blood at this time. Um, I just can't imagine, like, the horror. Um, also, do we know if she's still being, like, drugged, like, all the time at this point? Or... Are they just she's still like she has like drugs in her from but like not heavy so she's just been like starved for like most for like the whole time so she's just like weak that way but like i guess her adrenaline was just like well yeah i imagine i guess it's like fight or flight um but the couple let her in they gave her some clothing to cover up with and they dialed on one and the police came and took cynthia to the hospital and I guess through Cynthia's like retelling and also now like she has like direct like like knows exact I mean the police were basically coming to their neighbor's house. So they were able to catch David and Cindy and oh my god, Cindy and Cynthia were taken to the same hospital. Yeah, so they were taken well because remember Cindy has the like gash to her head from the ice pick and police didn't know like because so David's out at work. I guess, like, Cindy I can understand Cynthia, that, but they just think that they're, Cindy they're like, is, like, in it with her type thing. Or, well, no, they just think that she's, like, another injured person. So then That's they're all at the hospital. And, yeah, and then C Cindy is walking past Cindy, Cynthia, and Cynthia's, like, freaking out because she's there with her. Yeah. And um, uh, Cindy, like, yells at her that she's, like, on heroin and, like, all these drugs and stuff. So, like, she's crazy. Don't believe, like, anything she says. So she's just trying to, like, make them, like, not. I wonder but if they, she goes, like, she does tell the police, like. Drugged her, like, with heroin. Well, she tells the police two days before she was abducted she did use heroin. Mm. So. So that was pretty much it. And then, so this is, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the police investigation. And that's pretty much it. So when the police started investigating, they searched the trailer and they found the toy box and like all the stuff and they found like audio and videotapes, journals, drugs, personal belongings, 401 exactly to be exact of like items of from different people. Oh my God. And they had would like have like Polaroids and stuff. And then, um, yeah, but something that he would do was like the journals he would like meticulously like write everything down like about them like what how they reacted to this like yeah but it was all like, like i mean think about like from the perspective of like a 
sadistic serial killer like what he is gonna find important to like take notes on or whatever it's not like identifiable stuff because he didn't care about that like it, half the time he didn't even like mention their names right because that wasn't like yeah important so it was him. just like information that he liked or like you know but like how they react one of the pictures that he did find along the stuff was a polaroid of the woman's tattoo on her ankle and it was very like significant and so this woman they put it on the news and they're like if this is matches anyone like come forward and so pretty much she was like she knew something happened to her and but she didn't know like what happened because she couldn't remember like them what he did to her like any of that stuff yeah but that's how they like got that another witness is because oh my god if i were her i'd honestly probably rather not i mean i'm sure it was probably like plaguing her not knowing but to then like find that out after the fact is just like so horrific too it'd be like i wonder if they like told her the extent of like what she had gone through i wonder if i'm pretty i mean well everything found out so she would yeah I wonder if our listeners but, can hear the people in the background of your room, office. I don't know. Okay, so the FBI was finally called, and they came as well to help the local police department because they were like, oh, yeah, we don't know what to do because they've never, like, done anything like this. And, and then, well, and then Cindy also, like, agreed to testify against David in court for her sentencing to be like lighter. So she did go ahead and do that. She was still charged with kidnapping, criminal sexual penetration, conspiracy to commit kidnapping and conspiracy to commit criminal sexual penetration. Don't, don't really, I don't. I didn't really know that that was like a crime phrase. Yeah, I didn't know you could like get charged with it, but she got charged with a total of 36 years in total. But she received parole in 2000, or she was going to parole? receive parole. Nope. Oh. In 2017. And then she was released from parole. So she's free. That's what I'm saying. She's July free. July 15th, 2019. Yeah. What? Two years of parole. So she lives in Kentucky now. And what's crazy is like her address is just on the internet. Like you can find it. It's what? Like, on, okay. All the articles I'm I was not on. condoning this, but it's in, like not suggesting, not not. Let me be very clear. But it's a wonder that she's still safe and well. And she's just like out and about. But she did have to register as a level two sex offender, which is defined as people who have moderate risk of reoffending. Moderate? Yeah, if she was just with any dude that Who's... was like. That's insane. I don't... Yeah. So. Yeah, she's. If if y'all want to drive up to Kentucky and see Cindy, Cindy Hindi, y'all can if you want. But, so the, David's charges were kidnapping, multiple counts for abducting and holding women against their will, aggressive battery, sexual penetration, conspiracy to commit kidnapping, battery, and conspiracy. Battery. Oh yeah, sorry. And then conspiracy to commit aggravated battery. So he was not charged for murders because there was no bodies to prove this, even though there were like. The videos they did find it was just like him torturing them women but there's no like him killing the woman or like so they didn't have like any definite proof but he was charged with a total of 224 years in prison okay. and this deal was also leniency added to his time for his daughter because apparently some one of his daughters knew that he had two daughters one of them knew that like what was he was doing and like helped him well so okay this is like i guess like the one part of this whole thing that i might know a little bit more about because like what i listened to or what i had heard was that like from the podcast i listened to about it was saying that his i think it was his youngest daughter i'm not entirely sure at the time that like he was caught she was like in her late teens i want to say but anyways from the time she was like a toddler basically like she was always exposed to like the horrific like sexually like awful things that like he would do but it was like basically normalized in their household like she she knew that like the stuff that he was doing was like 
against the law, but it didn't necessarily like face her. She didn't see anything like morally wrong with it because that's like how she was raised. And um, so like she would see, and this like from what I know, she would like see and like knew of like of many of the victims, like knew that they were there and everything, and it just like wasn't like she was unfazed. Yeah. Um. But but oh, and he would show somehow... her like he would show her like videos like his dad had to her or had to him like when he was younger like he just kept the whole thing going and which is like kind of horrific to like think about like where his daughter is now i don't know but um anyways they had gotten in like a petty argument at some point like a, a big argument when she was like in her old teen years and literally as like a gotcha moment like she went to the police about him and so that's why no, yeah she called 911 about him I did hear that, and then they came, but he was like, they didn't find anything. Oh, really? Or they didn't, like, continue the search. And then later, she helped him catch a girl. Oh. So that's why she got charged, was for the, like, helping him for that one girl. And she was given 30 months in prison and five years on probation. So that's up by now. Um, so remember, um, he, wait. What day did they get arrested? Mm-hmm. March. Oh, wait. In March of 1999. So then in May 28th, 2002, David was supposed to be questioned again by police for like another interrogation type thing. And before that morning, before he could go um, be questioned, he had a heart attack and died in jail. So he was only in jail like two years. Ugh. That's so, like, and yeah, And, well, to end it on a somewhat happy note, Cynthia um, is the founder of Street Safe New Mexico, and it's a volunteer nonprofit that works with sex workers and other vulnerable people living on the street. Nice. So that's nice. But, and then you say, lots of details online of other things he did to the women, but this is the only case that has made me feel physically nauseous about reading everything about it. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it's actually awful, terrible. Go watch some like puppy videos or something after this. I'm a little bit like thoroughly disturbed. Yep. But uh, okay, guys. But we'll see y'all next week here at your crime diary. All right. Yup. Peace and love. Have a fab week.